I don't care who's wrong or right. I don't really want to fight no more. Too much talking, babe. Let's sleep on it tonight. I don't really want to fight no more. This is time for letting go. Those words came from a song by Tina Turner. And those of you who don't know a lot about Tina Turner, Tina Turner was in an abusive relationship. And um, it was pretty bad. There's a movie called What's Love Got to Do With It? If you want to see more. And at the end, that's what she decided. Like, I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to fight nobody no more. I just want peace. And she actually ended up being a Buddhist. She went all the way over. You know, she made sure she got that peace. And um, a lot of times you're only able to do that by reconciling, forgiving, healing, moving on. So I love that song for that very reason. The other day, Will Smith and Janet Hubert were talking about this very song because they have had a beef that lasted almost 30 years. And the two of them decided to finally squash a 27 year beef. And as they sat and cried and talked about it, this was the song that they mentioned. And when they mentioned that song, I knew exactly what they were talking about because that's one of my forgiveness songs. I played that song on repeat so many times while I was going through the Voldemort situation. So let's do the intro and I'm gonna tell you a lot more about this situation. I'm Queen Oset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Pass it on to somebody else who might like it too. And drop us a positive comment in the comment section. If you have time, please stick around to the end because I'm going to read two of my positive comments from previous videos at the end of this video. Likewise, um, if you would like to get a reading done, if you would like to send me a gift, if you would like to be a patron on Patreon, all of that information is underneath this video. My email, my social media, everything. So hit me up. So back to Will Smith. Okay, so many of you know Will Smith. Will Smith is a very famous actor and he's from my city. He's from Philly. Willie from Philly. Now, Will is from uh, West Philadelphia, born and raised, and I am from Northwest Philadelphia. So, uh, same general area, but very, very, very far away. <laughs> I would say like 20 minutes away, not that bad. So, when Will was younger, I was like in maybe high school, um, he had this show called The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It was a really good show. And during that time period, it was a lot of those wholesome, you know, family type shows. And The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was one of those kind of shows. And on the show was Janet Hubert. Janet Hubert played his Aunt Viv. Sometimes you hear her referred to as OG Aunt Viv or the original Aunt Viv. And the reason why she's called that is because he ended up, I don't think he fired her from what they were saying in the conversation, it sounded like he just made it impossible or like uh, the, the producers or whoever, it was his show though. So it sounds like whatever offer they made her made it impossible for her to keep working on the show. And the, all of this happened because they're, at first he said, him and her both said they had a really good relationship. The whole, the whole crew, the whole cast of this show got along pretty good. But Janet was going through some really difficult times at home. She had a three-month-old baby. Her husband was apparently abusive. Um, she didn't say to what extent, but in some kind of way, he was apparently abusive to her. And she was having a really hard time. Um, her, you know... Um, the set of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was a little wild for Janet. Because, you know, Janet's an old head. Janet was a theater 
you know, person. You know, she's the classically tra trained, you know, theater person. So she's used to a professional stage, a professional environment, that kind of thing. And it sounds like to me like this set wasn't like that. Like it was like more, you know, music and people popping up. And Will was young. He was like 20 something years old back then. So I'm sure that set wasn't as professional, according to her words, as some of the other ones that she had been on. So that started to take a toll on her, along with the baby, along with the problems with her husband. And Will started to think that she hated him because she was no longer entertained with these shenanigans. And instead of them talking and working through it, which I swear when I listen to them talk, I don't think they were at the place where they could do that. But if they could have done that, I don't think this beef would have happened. This beef is really, to me, a 27-year misunderstanding. Because it sounds like, to me, if they had really talked, that none of this would have occurred. Well, they didn't talk. They offered her a contract that was ass, that was not going to pay her enough to even take care of herself. She turned down the contract because she had to find work that was going to sustain her family. She had a mortgage. You know, she had all this stuff going on. And what they were offering her just wasn't enough money. So she had to turn it down and move on. So they recast her part to another lady uh, who became the new Aunt Viv. And that lady is the one that finished out the series with Will and the rest of the cast. But it never really ended. Even though they parted ways and she wasn't on the show anymore, it was all over. People were talking about it. Um, she said out of her own mouth that there was a lot of maliciousness from people. Um, it, Will was not very kind either. He said a lot of things about her being difficult to work with. And it was really damaging to her reputation and her career. And she was not able to get jobs. You know, nobody wants to work with you in Hollywood if you get the reputation for having gotten fired from a sitcom and you're difficult. Nobody trying to hire you and you a black woman. Let's just keep it real. It wasn't, it isn't as many, it's more opportunity. It might be more opportunities now. I don't really watch TV and movies like that. So I really couldn't say, but during that time period, there were specific avenues for people of color. You had to get on certain shows, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the Cosby show, a different world, family matters, things like that. And you had to get on one of those kind of like black entertainment kind of shows. And if you got a part like that, you had to hold on to it, you know, because it wasn't, you didn't know what another one was going to come. And on top of everything else, now you're blackballed because everybody knows that you left the other, you, it came off like she got fired to everybody else. And I didn't even know until this weekend that she actually didn't get fired. She left. So she left, can't find work, um, was very bitter. She was, you know, talking. There are a lot of videos of her saying a lot of very mean things. She was, she was venomous, you know, against Will and some of the other cast members like Alfonso. Alfonso Rivera was another guy on the show. She was very mean towards him. Um, and she just, you know, was very angry. She had been blackballed. She couldn't take care of her family. She was going through all kinds of like emotional distress. They lost the house, the mortgage I mentioned before. All kind of stuff happened to her. And she was just at her rock bottom, you know, and she always had a nasty word about Will. Um, Will would talk about her in the beginning. He wasn't as vicious as her. He's a Libra. So Libras aren't um, they, they can be vicious. They can be argumentative when they want to, but they usually don't go there. And when they do go there, they don't usually hold on to it very long. So he said a few things about her here and there, but for the most part, it was her that really kept it going because she was the one that lost everything. She was the one that couldn't get a job. And she felt like he was stopping her from working. Now, I can't really say he stopped her from working, but he did say a lot of things about her that would make another show not want to pick her up. I wouldn't have hired her. 
just from the rumors that I heard, I wouldn't have wanted to be a part of that. And that's what happened. A lot of times when she would go to different people, different producers, you know, she said at one point she went and talked to Oprah and Oprah was like, I don't want no parts of that. And I can't blame any of those people because if I had heard that too, and you trying to have a successful show and you know she got put off the other show supposedly and she was hard to work with supposedly allegedly i wouldn't know hire her either so i kind of understand where they're coming from and i understand where she's coming from because she's like you know i'm not difficult to work with i'm a trained actress and i was going through something you know so they talked it out you know um, and where I saw this at, in case you guys want to watch it, this was on the Red Table Talk. On Facebook, Jada Pickett Smith, his wife, has a little show called The Red Table Talk. It's a really good show. I've watched many episodes. And Will was on the show with his therapist. And him and his therapist were talking about what happened when him and Janet met. Because apparently the therapist was there in case one of them needed support. And they were able to talk through everything. And let me tell you guys, oh my God, I didn't watch the reunion. The reunion is going to be or is on HBO. I don't have HBO, but I did watch this on the Red Table Talk. And I've seen clips on um, Will's um, page because Will was on Instagram and he's put up a lot of clips and she's made tweets about it too talking about what a, a wonderful experience it was. Can you imagine having beef with somebody for almost 30 years and coming together and being able to hug and cry and talk it out? You know, that is got to be an amazing feeling. And I'm going to say that I think I know why this was able to happen now. Number one, I've been watching Will's career and his personal stuff that he shared, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, or wherever I see him at. And one of the things I've noticed is that Will has done an extensive amount of therapy. And I don't know what she did, because she didn't mention therapy or not, but I know he did a lot of therapy and I know that they both grew as people because they both came to that space of, I don't want to fight no more. And 30 years ago, 27 years ago, they both were more than willing to throw shots at each other. And they were both very angry. Her, I would say more so than him, but they still both had a very, you know, uh, tense um, uh, not, I ain't gonna call it violent. I don't remember them threatening each other, but it was a lot of bad blood. And I think what made this possible was that time has passed. They've both grown as people from their trials and tribulations. And I think that Will went through so much therapy that he was able to come to the table at this point. I don't think Will would have been able to come to the table um, in the same energy, you know, he had to grow, they both had to grow. And for anybody out there, you know, when I first saw this, I was a blobbering mess. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I've wanted to see this for a long time. I've been following this story since 30 years. So I've wanted to see them reconcile or at least bury the hatchet for a long time. I didn't think it would ever happen because every time I saw her, she was still so angry. But I was so I was crying like it was my own life. And I was like, oh my God, I just want to forgive everybody for everything. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, like I wanted to call everybody. I wanted to call Voldemort. I wanted to call my aunt. I wanted to call everybody and just be like, I'm so sorry. Let's squash everything. Let's never fight ever again. And then <laughs> reality hit. And I realized that that was only able to happen because you had two people who were ready to stop fighting. And for many of us in many of these situations, one of us or neither of us is ready to stop fighting. Now for me, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight nobody. I don't have no beef with nobody. I'm cool with everybody. I would love to hug everything out and sing Kumbaya. 
but I'm the only one that feels like that, you know, in those situations. Now, I have been able to do that with certain people, like my daughter's father, my ex-husband. We're at that point of kumbaya. We're cool. You know, I sent him a gift a couple months ago. He got a new girlfriend. I sent him some rose quartz. I was like, yeah, work out that heart chakra, you know, <laughs> you know, work that out. You know, she seems nice. And we've been able to come to that space. You know, we do good. He called me and asked me for advice one day. And I was like, he hasn't asked me for advice in like 25 years, you know? So that felt really good to mend that the same way it felt good to see Will and Janet mend their relationship. So like I said before, it can happen sometimes, um, but both people have to be at that space. And when it doesn't happen, it's because they're both not. So I say, take those kumbaya moments when you can get them. And when you can't get them, just let it go. You know, just, just breathe and just let it go. Because the one thing about them is that when they held each other and when they cried, you could see that all of that energy, they had never let each other go. And it wasn't even a romantic relationship. It was just a work relationship. But they had never let go all that hurt, all that pain. They were both still very present with it. And that's why they were never able to let it go. They were still very, you know, holding on to it. So I tell people, if you can release it, even without the other person and you talking, if you can just be like, you know what, I forgive them, I'm going to let it go. That's the best thing for your heart. If you can reconnect and have a hug moment, that's wonderful. And if you can't, that's fine too. The important thing is letting it go. And before I go, I wanted to show you this. This is a smoky quartz. And the smoky quartz is said to be the um, stone of healing. It's one of them. There's many stones for healing. But this one is said to help you with bad or negative emotions that are inside of you. It's said to help you dissolve and release them and ground yourself. So if you have some healing to do or you're working through some forgiveness, consider getting yourself a nice chunk of smoky quartz. Okay. It's readily accessible and it's not expensive. So let's do our positive comments. Jada Tay said, I remember learning that if you had a birth defect back then or even a birth mark, they would trip and say it's witchcraft. That's true. Back in the day, if you had any kind of mark on you, it could be a, a cigarette burn or something, you know? And we're talking about like the, the old days, 1400s, 15, 16, 1200s, back during that time period. And yeah, if you had any kind of mark, they would say you were a witch, even if you had nothing to do with any kind of spiritual work at all. Yolanda Lara. Hey, Yolanda. Yolanda said, I feel that you are talking to me because that is exactly what I'm going through in my relationship. Lack of affection. Yeah, um, a lot of times uh, this happens in relationships. You get busy, you know, people grow apart. And it doesn't have to be the kiss of death if the two people are down to work through it. But it definitely will kill a relationship if it's not addressed. So I would suggest, Yolanda, that you try to communicate with your partner. And if your partner is not willing to make changes, brace yourself because that's something that could end your relationship. Okay? So I would try. Whenever I talk to somebody and they tell me they have a relationship, I always tell them, if no abuse is present, try. Just try, even if it's just, you know, a Hercules effort, a couple of times going to therapy, a book you read together. Just try, okay? All right, guys, come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.